Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I thought I'd show you this morning is a real quick project of how to make a twisted metal fork. And to me, a, a metal fork and a wooden spoon are very symbolic of self reliance in general because woodworking and blacksmithing are two of the most important skills that you can possibly own in a long term self reliance scenario. You need the wood to manipulate the metal and in the end you need the metal to manipulate the wood in finer fashion because you need charcoal to be able to manipulate the metal or a wood fire and then you need to create metal tools to manipulate that wood into finer objects. So everything that you do revolves around wood and metal as a resource and these two together symbolize that very well. So today we're going to look at making the twisted metal fork. It's a very simple project. It just takes a little while to get the hang of doing it. You'll probably have to make four or five till you get one you really like. Then you could make as many as you wanted after that. So stay with me and we'll get started. Okay, so to start off with, we're gonna need some kind of a heavy gauge wire. And this wire here is something I picked up out of a scrap yard some time ago and it's pretty stiff wire. It's not something you're just gonna twist this stuff down without heating it up. You can bend it, but as far as twisting it down, it's not very easy. And the shorter length of it you get, it's much harder to bend. So it's going to make your tines nice and sturdy. Now you've got to decide how much of this wire you want. And I can't tell you exactly what kind of wire this is. You're just going to have to look around until you find what you need. I suspect a heavy, heavy baling wire might work for this as well. But I think yesterday the pieces that I was working with were probably around... I want to say 16 inches long. So if I just take a measuring device here and pull out 16 inches of this wire and then cut it off with a pair of fencing pliers, probably one of the most useful tools on the planet, in my opinion, is a pair of fencing pliers. These things will do a lot. I mean, you can hammer nails with them. You can hammer fence staples in with them. You can pull out nails and fence staples with them. You can twist wire with them. I mean, they're just an unbelievable tool. If you manipulate one into that thing into a screwdriver, you've got something to work with there as well. So it becomes a very useful multi-tool. All right. So now we're just going to heat this piece of wire up, and I'm going to show you how I twist it down. All right. So you don't have to have a lot of fancy stuff to do this with. Um, a vise will do 99% of this work for you, and just something to twist it down with, like a piece of scrap rebar. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half as best I can like this and get it pretty close to even and then I'm just going to take a hammer and I'm going to pound it down to where it's not all the way closed but I'm going to let that wire cross over and you see I've got that bend off by about I don't know less than a quarter of an inch so that's not a big deal and what I can do is I can come up in here and I can actually smack down on this side and open that up and then hit it back down the other direction this way and that will kind of even that up a little bit better like that okay so now I'm gonna let these cross over right here about the length of what I want my tines to end up and then I'm gonna heat this whole thing up and we're gonna come back over here and when I get it hot I'm gonna put that twist where I want those tines to end up in the vise just like that insert a twister and just start spinning this thing down. I might have to heat it up a couple of times to get that good tight twist in there like this one has. And this has got an even tighter twist. This small one I made for my granddaughter has an even tighter twist on it. So that's all up to you how you manipulate that metal and what it looks like when you're done. You could heat this up in a campfire. This is not real heavy duty steel. You could heat this up in a campfire to do something like this easy enough or you could use a coal forge or a propane forge. Now we're just going to bring this thing over here, we'll lock it in right where we want our tines to be, just like that, and then we're just going to start twisting it down. Now that it's nice and soft and hot, that's pretty easy to do. And once I feel it start to cool and resist twisting down, I'll look it over and decide where I need to heat it up at and where I need to lock it in a vise to twist it down more even. You'll feel it. 
start to tighten up as you twist it. And if you don't want to twist it off, you don't want to go too far. Now, we've got a pretty even twist from here to here. This area down here can be a little tighter. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat that area up a little bit more again and twist it just a little bit more. We're actually not too bad off right now as far as what we want. I've taken a punch and I've locked it in this vise just like this and this punch is going to become a horn for me on this front side that's about as wide as I want my forks anyway. Any piece of round stock would work for this but this punch works real well for stuff like this for small projects. So now we're going to get a small hammer that we can use to manipulate things a little bit here. Come in here and let this cool down just a little bit. What we're trying to do now is just separate the forks, and I can pretty much just push it down on there to get that done. Just like that. Then I can come in and manipulate these things outward like this while they're still hot, still soft. And I'll worry about the straightness of the handle in a minute. Right now, I'm just worried about forming the fork itself. And getting it even and in the middle. I get as far back on that round area as I can get it. So now I've got those forks formed about the way I want them as far as the distance and the width goes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten this up a little bit and then I'm going to even these up on a grinding wheel or a grinding belt, sharpen it up, and we're going to have ourselves a nice fork. Pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cool this down in a bucket of water and come back. Now by cooling this down while it was hot in water, we've made it fairly hard. You can still manipulate it a little bit with your hands. And I'm just going to come in here and just kind of bend these forks a little bit, just like that, to give them a little bit of an upward sweep. And then I'm going to work on exactly what I want for a spread, make sure I get that good and even, and make sure that my handle is nice and straight all the way across. And then we're going to go to the grinder and finish this off. So drop this down just a shade, and drop this down just a shade, just like that. This stuff, you can manipulate this with your hands, but it's going to be stiff. So you're definitely not going to bend it by eating with it, that's for sure. Okay, that gives us kind of the bend that we're looking for. Once we even things up, we'll be in pretty good shape. Yeah. All right, let's get to the grinder. Okay, you could use a belt or you could use a grinding wheel for this. All I'm going to do is come in here, get these even back. Get them the same length. Look at my bends, make sure they're pretty even. Then I'm just going to come in here on the slack side of this belt and just kind of roll this around on one side at about 180. Then come on the other side and roll it around 180. Look at my bends, make sure I'm about even there. That looks pretty good. And when we're done, we've got a decent fork. Our bends are even here. Our handle's nice and straight. We've got about the right length so it fits in our hand good so we can eat with it. 
And we've got a dandy fine little fork to put with our wooden spoon. It gives us more of a traditional look to our kit. It doesn't add much weight whatsoever. All right, folks. Well, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me today for this quick little project on making a twisted fork to go with a hand-carved wooden spoon. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.